coming to the second section of the implants in orthopedics topics the plating yes even though the plates have been invented nearly some 60 to 70 years before the invention of the nailing techniques still plating is most commonly used for the diaphyseal fractures metaphyseal fractures and the intraarticular fractures mainly they are commonly used for all the intraarticular fractures plating works on the principle of load bearing device because whenever a patient after application of the plate starts weight bearing that stress or the, that force is acted directly on the plates rather than at the fracture site then plating is a kind of rigid fixation there is very very minimal micro motion at the fracture site so there is less chance of callus formation so regarding the callus formation and the types of bone healing i will discuss in the chapter of the bone healing or fracture healing chapters yes then uh, one of the disadvantage of a plating as comparing with a, a nail fixation is prolonged immobilization assume that a patient of a intertrochanteric fracture treated with the help of a nailing which means a this thing proximal femoral nail or a short proximal femoral nail it will require the patient at least two to three weeks to start non weight bearing or a partial weight bearing on the other hand the same patient of intratrochanteric fracture treated with a dhs plate fixation he, they will require at least four to six weeks so the uh, period of immobilization is generally increased in plating techniques because they are the load bearing device on the other hand the nailing system are called as load sharing device yes so coming to the second thing what are the modalities of plating which means what are the purpose of plating yes so there might be any type of fracture for that fracture what is the purpose of the plate we are going to apply so there are four modalities yes the first is a neutralization plate so the, what is the purpose of the neutralization plate neutralization are na, plates are nothing but they are also called as protection plates because the main function of the uh, this thing holding the fracture is done by the lax screw which means a screw that is applied mainly to provide compression at the fracture site see this example you can see there is a fracture of the distal shaft of the uh, femur yes so this fracture is held together with the help of this fracture segments are held together with the help of this screw so this screw is called as a lax screw yes after application of a lax screw yes this screw then there is a one more plate is applied this plate is applied to protect or the protect the this thing bone as well as the screw from the bending forces so this type of plate application is called as neutralization plate are also called as protection plates yes then coming to the second type compression plating so what is mean by compression we are compressing together yes so this type of plating is mainly done to compress the fracture site see this is a fracture of the this thing shaft of the humerus yes so here the uh, there is a well support of muscles attached to both the proximal as well as the uh, this thing distal fragment of the after the fracture so to counteract that bending force or to counter the muscle full yes this type of plate is applied in such a way that this will provide compression which means they will bind together the fracture fragments against the distracting force or the bending force of the muscles so this type of plating system or this modality of plating we call it as compression plating yes so that the coming to the third type bridge plating what is mean by bridge plating as the name suggests we are not going to open the fracture site yes assume that here there is a fracture yeah so we are not going to open the fracture site instead we will take an incision here yes and we will take an incision here so this area will be left untouched so this area will act as a bridge assume that you are seeing a bridge so how the bridge is made up of it will be made up of a concrete and center there will be a pillar so this fracture site will act as a pillar and under uh, this thing except the fracture site ahead and behind we are opening and we are fixing the plate with screws so this system of plating is called as bridge plating yeah okay 
then coming to the fourth system buttress plating so what is mean by buttress plating the meaning of buttress is it just gives the support yes so here you see this fracture yes so here uh, this type of plate just to provides the support to the articular surface so assume that you are having a uh, this thing building in our home so to support the building we put up multiple pillars at the basement so what is the purpose of the pillars at the basement so they will continuously they will provide buttressing or they will continuously provide support so these kind of plates they will provide continuous support and they are mainly applied at the articular surface yes so they are mainly useful for the articular fractures they prevent the collapse of the articular fragments so these kinds of plate or these modality of plating is called as buttress plating yes now coming to the different types of plates yes so this plate is called as a dynamic compression plate as the name suggests yes this plate is mainly used for the compression or they, this the purpose of this plate is to provide the compression at the fracture site so they are available in multiple sizes yes so they are available in 3.5 mm sizes 4.5 mm sizes so these 3.5 mm are used in radius ulna yes and even fibular fractures also we can use and the 4.5 system we can use it for humerus fractures fractures humeral shaft fractures then tibia shaft fractures and even for the femoral shaft fractures yes so here this is the uh, femoral system of dcp yes so now coming to the second system this is called as lc lcp what is mean by lc it is called as limited contact then locking compression plate so here see this is a normal this thing dynamic compression plate here there is no locking of the screw between the plate and the screw head yes here the see this holes you can see the multiple thread here yes so in this the screw will have a the head of the screw will have multiple thread that thread will be locking at the uh, this thing plate surface so this is called as locking compression plate and why it is called as lc lcp the lc means limited contact so this is the anterior surface of the plate as you can see yes anterior surface of the plate which is smooth on the posterior surface you can see there are multiple depressions here right yes so these multiple depressions what they do once the plate is fixed to the uh, this thing shaft surface yes so the shaft gets nearly 80 percentage blood supply from the nutrient arteries yes intramedullary blood supply on the other hand the outer surface receives maximum blood supply from the periosteum so the 20 percentage of the supply of the bone blood supply of the bone is supplied by the periosteum so due to this limited contact there is a less chance of injury compression injury to the periosteum so comparing with the the normal dynamic compression plate even though lcp has similar they provide similar compression on the other hand they cause very less injury to the periosteum so that's why they are called as lc lcp limited contact because of the limited contact they increase the blood supply or by reducing the injury to the periosteum yes so this is the difference you can see so this is a normal dcp so this is a lc lcp and this is the uh, this thing uh, 4.5 mm broad dcp and lc lcp used for the femoral shaft fractures yes so now coming to the other system it is called a semi tubular plates so these plates are very thin are low profile plates because as you can see here yes so you can see the thickness of the uh, dcp plates yes they are some comparatively more thick on comparison with these plates so these semi tubular plates are around 1 to 2 mm in thickness and why they are called a semi tubular they are curved yes they are not flat on the other hand they are curved yes so they are similar to a tubular or cylindrical structure that too in a one third manner or one half manner so that's why they are called as semi tubular fractures so they are generally applied for the 
um, this thing bone shaft fractures where there is very limited subcutaneous tissue you can take an example of the this thing distal fibular fracture we all know we can palpate the lateral malleolus very easily which means there is very less or very minimal muscle cover over the lateral malleolar region or even for the medial malleolar fractures for the verticular medial malleolar fractures we can apply this semi tubular plating system then coming to the recon plates the recon means reconstruction plates these plates are also low profile plates they can be bent in any direction yes so these plates can up be applied for the shaft fractures of the ulna radius or even for the distal fibular fractures and they are available in multiple shapes for the contouring onto the different fracture types of the pelvic fractures and acetabular fractures so whenever you come across recon plates you should remember fibular fractures yes and acetabulum and pelvic fractures so there are specialized reconstruction plate or recon plates mainly for the purpose of applying to the acetabular fractures and pelvic fractures yes so now coming to the specific plates based on the region so the name suggests as philos plates on seeing this philos you might see some scientist name no it is not a scientist name which means this philos means proximal yes proximal humerus yes because this is applied to the proximal part of the humerus bone fractures those that's why he called as proximal humerus interlocking yes so there is locking between the bone and the screws as well as the locking of the screw head and the plate yes so this is a locking type of plate so that's why he called as proximal humerus interlocking system of plates yes so as the name suggests they are used for the this thing surgical neck of humerus fractures or the proximal sh shaft fractures of the humerus so for the both the conditions we can apply the fillos plate and there are multiple lengths available based on the fracture or the uh, this thing site of the fracture yes then coming to the distal humerus fractures as we all know the distal humeral region contains two condyles lateral condyle and medial condyle or sometimes the intracondylar fractures we need to support both the medial and lateral column that time these fra this thing these plates will be helpful so these plates are called as distal humerus locking plate system yes now coming to the distal radius fractures yes we all know the multiple types of distal and radius fractures colis fracture is there bortens fracture is there smith fracture is there yes so based on the fracture type and the level of fracture we can apply the multiple types of the distal and radius plates so these plates are this thing these plates are different anatomical types are there because based on the angle different persons will be having different angle yes so to match the angle we have we have anatomical distal and radius plates like this sometimes generally we apply these plates on the volar aspect yes we apply on the volar aspect sometimes we need the fixation on the dorsal aspect so this system of plate or plates are applied on the dorsal aspect yes so now coming to the lower limb so we have a dhs plate so it is called as dynamic hip screw so it is called as dynamic we know that dynamic means some movement is happening static means there is no movement yes so what where the dynamic movement happens see these uh, this thing this type of plates are generally applied for the basi cervical neck of femur fracture as well as stable intertrochanteric fractures yes as we all already know that generally we apply a unstable fracture or a stable fracture the most commonly used uh, this thing modality of treatment is internal fixation with the help of the proximal femoral nail but some 10 years before the most common modality of treatment was dhs and now the, they are like equal it's like 50 50 percentage it is used but previously 10 years before like uh, this thing the intramedullary system is very costly and the most common modality of treatment used for an intertrochanteric fractures are the dhs system of plates yes so here we have the different parts so this is called as richard screw yes richard screw yes and this is called as a barrel plate or a normal dhs plate and this is called as a compression screw 
so first we will apply this richard screw through the neck into the femoral head yes then after that we apply the plate and fix the plate with the screws to the sh proximal shaft of the femur then we apply the compression plate so this dhs plate works on the principle of controlled collapse so after fixation once the patient starts weight bearing this plate yes this plate will be gliding over this richard screw so there is some movement of the uh, screw and the, this thing there is some movement between the screw and this plate so that's why it is called as dynamic plate yes because there is some movement so that's why it called as dynamic hip screw system yeah so now coming to the distal femoral lcp so proximally we have the multiple fractures intertrochanteric fractures base cervical neck femur fractures then the subtrochanteric fractures so for this either we use a dhs plate or the proximal femoral nail as the name suggests yes now coming now moving on to the distal femoral uh, fractures yes so in the distal femoral fractures we apply this distal femur lcp which means locking compression plate this plate is also called as cobra plate because as you can see this is looks like a hood of the cobra yes so that's why it's also called as a cobra plate so as you can see in this x-ray there is a fracture of the distal shaft of the femur we have applied a plate yes this plate has been uh, used as a bridge plate yes because the fracture site there is no screw system and we have used a minimally invasive technique for the application of the distal femur lcp yeah so now coming to the proximal tibia fractures yes so these plates are called as proximal tibia locking plates and this plate is called the workhorse for the proximal tibia fractures yes because this plate is most commonly used for the maximum cases of the proximal tibia intercondylar fractures or the lateral condylar fractures yeah so this plate is also called as hockey plate since the from the tip as well as the shape it looks like a hockey stick yes it looks like a hockey stick yes so that's why this plate is called as a hockey plate for a enough or easy understanding yes then these plates are also called as proximal tibia plate but they are used for the buttressing purpose or the buttressing modality yes so what is the shape as you can see it is shaped like a inverted l yes so if i take like this yes so it is shaped like a l okay so if the if i take it and if i rotate the image in the inverted direction it looks like a l so this plate is called as l shaped buttress or l buttress proximal tibia plate so here there is a locking screw here or a combination screw and this is a simple screw so this is a non locking l buttress this is a locking l buttress plate so this plate looks in the shape of a t so this plate is called as t buttress proximal tibia plate so these two plates are also even applied for the proximal tibia fractures or the condylar fractures of the proximal tibia now moving on to the distal tibia so these plates are called as distal tibia locking compression plate or distal tibia lcp so this plate is mainly used for the medial surface fractures or the when you want to fix the plate in the medial aspect of the tibia then we use this plate yes and this plate is used on the anterolateral aspect yes so this is applied on the medial aspect and this is applied on the anterolateral aspect of the tibia for the fixation of the distal tibia fracture